All right, so my name is Suzanne Hart. Welcome, 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 Mindset Mastery. As I said, our topic today is are you caught in a fear storm? This is about when fear grips you, right? When you are paralyzed. This is about when you find yourself in procrastination, avoidance, in a conversation about can't, not the right time, all the things we tell ourselves when we are just afraid to act. We're gonna talk through this because you know, we have been through so much in, in 2020 already, lots of stuff going on. And I know there's people going, I just, oh, I'm just stuck. So we're gonna talk about getting yourself unstuck. We're gonna talk about managing fear and stepping through it. And I, so I've taken some time and outlined a few things for you. So I'm really, really excited to share this topic with you. So first of all, what is a fear storm? A fear storm is that overwhelming emotion of fear. Sometimes it just stops you. So put in the comment section if you have ever truly just felt yourself stopped by fear. And as I said, you'll find yourself having conversations that you otherwise wouldn't do. This isn't the right time. Um, you know, this is not for me. It's too big. I can't. I didn't want it anyway. Or just paralyzed and in total avoidance. So if that is you and you've had that experience, put, you know, fear storm, hashtag fear storm in the comment section. Before I dive into the topic today, uh, our word today, I believe, is mastermind. Uh, so write that in the comment session, hashtag mastermind, because one of the things that we'll be giving away today is our Mindset Mastery mini course. Yes, yes. So if you put mastermind in the comment section, you will be able to, we'll make sure and connect with you and give you access to our ma Mindset Mastery mini course. It's Mastery Mindset Mastery Life mini course, and it's all the areas of, of mastery and the seven principles. We're going to walk you through that. Totally complimentary for showing up. So put hashtag in, in the comment section so you can get that. All right, so let's jump into it. So one of the things I was really interesting interested is, is, you know, why do we experience fear and who experiences fear? Well, they say, check this out. They said people who are, are leaders, entrepreneurs, experience more fear than the average person, than, than their followers. Why? because they are pushing the envelope. They are going beyond their, their comfort zone. But think about it, as entrepreneurs, you're bringing products, services, new things to the marketplace. You're putting yourself out there. You are changing beliefs, challenging status quo, introducing something new. That's called innovation, it's called change, and it's called beyond your comfort zone. And oftentimes, just before we leap or introduce something, what happens? We get gripped with fear. I remember when I was about to launch my book, Leading with Character, and I had read it. I had reread it. I read it again. I had it edited. I had it edited again. I reread it. It was crazy. I just didn't want to let it go. Why? Because I was in the conversation of what if no one likes it? What if it's not good enough? What if, what if, what if? Fear had gripped me. And I remember giving it to my sister and letting her do the final edit and saying, give it to my assistant and send it off while I'm not here. Because I knew I was just caught in this cycle of fear. So how many of you have, have had that happen for yourself? I see Cindy watching, I see Mito watching, welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, how many of you have had that happen? I see uh, Dominic, I see Tracy. Hey Tracy, how are you, hon? I see uh, Linda, welcome Linda. And of course I see Tria, thank you for the love everyone. So if you have had that happen, you're just, you're just avoiding, right? So think about it. Because we are entrepreneurs, because we're leaders, because we're up to making a difference, we are more likely to experience fear. Now, this is the interesting thing. They say that leaders and entrepreneurs, one of the skills that you are going to be required to master is mastering the emotion of fear when it comes up. You're gonna be asked to ride the fear storm. And it really is, it strikes like a storm and you're gonna be asked to ride it out. Now. The, the, quest, the question I wanted to ask myself was, you know, or ask you, is what's the impact when you get caught in fear? How many of you have gotten caught in fear and not taken action that you want to, know you deserve to, 
or that fear is standing between you and where you want to be. Well, listen to the cost of not actually, you know, acting on your fear. It will make you angry. It could have you depressed and resigned, right? It decreases your energy and stops your creativity. Why? Because we go into questioning. We go into uncertainty. So it decreases our, our certainty. We will start to have conversations with ourselves and they aren't good ones. So our, our internal dialogue Escalates, and you know when you're in fear, the last person you want to be having a full-blown conversation with is you, yourself, me, myself, and I, right? So these are all the things that begin to happen, but what really is going on is you are stopped. Now, this is the interesting thing that I want everyone to remember, is that fear is a conversation with yourself, right? Often by yourself, in your head, that seems real. Oftentimes what you've done is you've taken stuff from your past, dragged it, not in, it kind of into your present, but actually thrown it into the future and painted this crazy picture of what could, would, might, should happen. And you are just at it and you are telling yourself this believable story. And this is what happens. We start to believe the picture, the, the story we're, we've got going on in our head, and we start to relate to it as real. And now we're not in the place of responding. We are reacting to this emotion called fear and treating it like it's happening right now. So this is what I want you to be present to, is this is the effect of fear and what is going on. So the question then becomes, what do you do, right? What do you do when fear grips you? How do you get out of the storm? So I want to, I want to just get some comments. How have you gotten out of the storm? Who wants to share? What, how have you dealt with it? Let me see what's, what people are saying. Yeah, Cindy, I get it. There's a bit of delay, hon. I, I got you. So how, are peop, how have people gotten out of the storm, right? So let us actually look at that. I'm just checking a few things here, make sure everything's okay. So how have you gotten out of the storm? Well, one of the key things in terms of getting out of the storm is one, being willing to ride it out. Now, this may seem weird. This may seem odd, but they say that you, you are wanting to ride out the fear storm. What that means is not taking action. So you don't want to take any action when you're in the middle of fear. But what it does mean is that you want to actually ride it out. Now, why would we want to do that? Because you want to acknowledge that you are in fear. You want to be present to the fear and you want to get out of avoiding the fear and ex making excuses for it. So it's to really sit in it. Now, this is the interesting thing that I've learned personally when I actually stop and I face my own fear and I sit in it and I actually begin to listen to what's going on in my head. One of the things that it always alerts me to is the things I need to address in order to get going. So I remember a friend of mine called me and it was at the beginning of what was going on with the so-called pandemic. And, uh, and, sh and she was overwhelmed and she, had a, and she was just gripped with fear. And you could hear it in her voice. You could hear it in all, all that was going on. And part of it was, it was the fear of what you, she didn't know. How many of you have gotten caught in what you don't know? Though that's usually what creates fear when we're stepping into the unknown or we're caught in what we don't know. And so one of the questions I asked her was, what is it that you need to know to help you feel better? And she started to reflect and she started giving me a list of the things that she needed to know. What it was, was she needed answers. Now, once she started going and getting the answers, interestingly, her fear began to dissipate. But in order to access it, she actually had to sit in the fear. That's what she had to do. She actually had to sit in the fear and actually deal with it. And then she had to say, what is going on for me? What is going on in my head? And once she was able to do that, she was able to start asking herself, what do I need? What do I need? And it was really, what questions do I need to get answered? What is it that I don't know that's creating this fear storm that's got me caught? And once she began to, to, to write down what she needed, and the minute she started getting those questions answered, what began to happen for her 
was her fear began to dissipate. It began to dissipate. Now, when they say don't take action in the middle of the fear storm, what they're actually saying is usually when we take action in the middle of the fear storm, what we're doing is we're taking, we're reacting because we want to avoid and we want to de decrease the anxiety and the discomfort that we're feeling. But that discomfort is actually your body and your mind telling you you're on the precipice of change. You're on the precipice of probably greatness. You're on the precipice of birthing a new idea. You're on the precipice of something amazing. And so your mind is getting ready for that. And it's, and it's almost like it's running in two directions at the same time. So it's an indicator of a good thing. Now, what's also going on is you're actually getting data as to what you need. And if you don't go into reaction and just go, I just got to get rid of how I'm feeling and I'm just going to make a decision. And oftentimes it's, I can't do it. This is not a good time or you make a rash decision that's not a good one, is to sit with it and actually review what's going on and get and write down the questions. I, I like to say journal, right? Journal and get your thoughts out and then start to get the questions answered for yourself. And usually by getting the questions answered, we go from unknown to knowing, unknown to knowing. Now you don't go into certainty because there's no certainty in the, when, you, when you're navigating something new, but it might be you, need, you might have a money question you need answered. You might have a risk question you need answered. You might have a support question you need answered. You might have resources that you need answered. You get to answer all these questions. And what sitting in that fear and answering the question does, it begins to bring down that level of uncertainty. And now you're sitting in a place of clarity. Now, this is the interesting thing. I'm not saying that fear goes away because it doesn't. You, it decreases to a place where it's manageable. And in manageable fear, what you're able to do is step into it and actually you know, navigate the resistance. I like to say it's like this wall we run into, right? We, we're navigating our fear and we hit this wall and we hit the resistance and now we're navigating it. So what happens after you begin to navigate it is that you're actually able to break, break through it. And you know, one of the things I remind myself is everything that's worth having, everything that's worth getting sits on the other side of this thing called fear. It truly, truly does. Now, this is the other thing I really want you to begin to get is what is the benefit? And I'm going to check on my notes here because I want to make sure that, that you, you really begin to get it. Right. So we talked about accepting and surrendering. Right. And, and really, you know, going with the flow, asking yourself great questions and really just surrendering to 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 the fear. Right. But what's what's the benefit on the other side? Well, on the other side, you get the opportunity to do the things that you dreamed of. But this is the other thing I, I have learned that once I step through and I get into action around the things that scare me, my fear actually goes from high to even lower to lower, and it, it, it goes to next to nothing. Because once I'm in action and I've broken through the fear, I'm, in, I'm good. Now, this is the other thing that happens. The, what, what else begins to rise is my confidence and my self-worth and my belief in myself and my certainty. It begins to come up and it begins to rise. Why? Because I've broken out of what was once comfortable and I'm now effectively navigating this new place. And so what it does is it brings, it brings me a new level of confidence and a new level of certainty. And I'm actually arming my toolkit. I'm putting new stuff in my toolkit so that the next time I face this type of fear, whatever it is that I'm going through, what will happen is I'm armed with the memory, and that's the word, the memory of how well I did the last time. And I want to say to you guys something is, is what's really cool about this is everything we do is like a cycle. It truly is, right? So, so I always like to say an event happened in your life that caused you to be paralyzed by fear. And you go into avoidance, you go into all the conversations and things start racing in your head. Well, that event is just what it is. It's an event in time. 
right? And then you get to look at what's my perception? What's my perception of it? And you, and you sit with it and you work through it and you get those questions answered. In that place, you are arming yourself with information that begins to decrease the fear and allows you to step through to the other side and take action. And it's the response, not the reaction. Remember, reactions of an emotional place. Response is, a, is, a, is when your head and your heart connect and you start thinking things through. So you go into response and response allows you to take actions that build you up and arm you. And what happens is when you go around again and you meet a, that event or something similar, what occurs is now you've got stuff to bring from the past that says, we've done this before. You have done it. You can do this. And now you go into it armed with the experience of the past. Now, I want to just take a moment and talk to you about what occurs when you get stopped, okay? And you, and you actually allow yourself to get stopped with fear. So an event happens, right? An opportunity, something that happens and you're uncertain and fear arises and you find yourself gripped with fear in procrastination, all these different things. And then you react and you don't actually take time to process what's going on. You react and you say, I can't do it. It's not a good time. It's not for me, whatever we tell ourselves. And what unfortunately happens is you begin to carry that into your future. Now, this is the interesting thing. It's our mind is like a file. What your mind does is it files it and it says, last time we faced this, Suzanne bailed, and let's file that. And what happens is the next time you face a similar thing, you don't have something to pull on. The only thing you have to pull on is the last time you bailed. And what your mind ends up telling you is, you know, when we face this, you run for the hills. You ran for the hills last time. And now you've got to go get past that. And, it, and what ends up happening is your fear begins to expand and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So the key is, is to really sit in acceptance, you know, and I say that word a lot, sit in acceptance of the fear and ask yourself what is truly going on and start to unpack it and ask yourself those questions so you start getting the answers. Because we want to create a cycle of building it right? You know, you, you hear me say all the time that our, our, our integrity with ourselves, our willingness to follow through, be our word, honor our commitment, fulfill on the things we desire is the biggest habit you can have. Why? Because you, our mind knows who we are being for ourselves, even when no one else knows. We carry ourselves everywhere. We carry the conversations we have with ourselves everywhere. So one of the beautiful things is when you start taking those small steps and those small victories, and you, and you, you step through your fear, you're arming yourself.